Well, good afternoon and welcome to this week's episode of Rachel Gaffney's Real Ireland. And today's episode is called Dressing the First Lady. And my guest today is going to be Irish woman, Laura Weber. Um, my producer today is Ashley Goodis. Hi, Ashley. Thanks for bearing with me. Hello. Hi. Uh, is, can everybody meet you? Can they say hello to you there in the control they towers? They can't see me today because I am without a, um, a camera here. Oh, lucky you. I'm <laughs> proud of that one right now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what a difference a week makes. Oh my gosh, I know. I can't believe that last week we were all snowed in and it was freezing and now it's in the 70s. Unbelievable. I was um, in my home for, we were without power for three solid days and uh, thanks to our very, very, very good friends who I'm indebted to, we had to move into their house for two days. I'm sure they're going to claim us as tax dependents for next year, but um, their hospitality was wonderful. So uh, here we are in Dallas. I'm in the uh, Lincoln Center on overlooking LBJ Freeway, which is Lyndon B. Johnson Freeway here in Dallas. I know it's not the most glamorous of scenes in the background, but hey, it's real. We're in Dallas and I'm at work in the tower. So thank you for joining us. So let's get straight into it. We have a lot to cover today and today's episode should hopefully be very heavily, very visual. So you don't need to be hearing or seeing from me. I'm really just the conduit. So. Let me start here at the very beginning and tell you about Laura Weber. Um, Laura was born and raised in Dublin and she graduated from NCAD. And NCAD, for those of you in the States, is the National College of Art and Design in Dublin. She graduated there in 2012 and she moved to New York in 2013. By 2019, she set up on her own and she founded her own atelier called LW Pearl, LW for Laura Weber, of course, and Pearl, very significant, she mentioned to me before, was because you have to go deep diving to find a pearl, to find something really special and beautiful. So hence the name LW Pearl. I, I love that. Um, Laura was telling me that she worked at London Fashion Week for years while she was in college um, in backstage management with the models and everything. So she's no stranger to hard work. She's no slacker. Um, and then she founded LW Pearl, as I mentioned, in 2019. And then... A lot of people knew about her in the fashion world, those that write about her, those that buy from her, but to the general public, maybe they didn't know about her until her work was on display this year in January of 2021, when the new first lady for the United States, Dr. Jill Biden, um, wore this incredible white coat, mask and dress, uh, which was commissioned by, the designer for this was uh, Gabriella Hurst. So today we're very lucky to have her here, live from New York, Laura Weber. Let's hope we, the gods are with us. Laura, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, and you're so humble. Here's the thing I love about you. You are so incredibly talented and gifted. And you and I have been talking back and forth for weeks. And I said it to the girls here, the more I look at your work, the more I go into it, the more I realize just how incredible you are and how fascinated I have become and I think others will be with this whole world of what you call embellishments. So Laura, would you start, um, is, there's no doubt that we can see sort of what's hanging behind you, but I just wanna make sure, is that a calico of the coat for the first lady? It is, right here on my right, I have the original muslin for what we placed all the flowers um, for the placement of the embroidery for the coat for Jill, Dr. Jill Biden. Um, and then to my left here, I have some of my personal brand um, hanging on the rail behind me. Oh, wonderful, we're gonna be talking about that towards the end of the, the show. We're gonna be letting people know about this new brand and what's happening, which is very exciting. Um, let's. Can we go back and talk about um, embellishment because Again, for those of us that, you know, just know about fashion and design as a very sort of, it's a great umbrella for, for everything term, um, but embellishment really does add something to clothing. And it's not just about putting a belt or a buckle. Can you explain to people what embellishment is? And we'll show some images of perhaps the type of work that you do and who you do it for, which is your, your client list is impressive, but what you do is very impressive. So. Laura, would you explain to us a little bit more about yeah. embellishments? So embellishment is the use of other materials on a surface. So for example, uh, embroidery thread, sequins, beads, pearls, uh, rhinestones, um, there's studs. There's so many different ways of embellishing fabric. 
and it covers a huge huge range and like you said it's like a huge umbrella and so the surface treatment and the treatment you apply to a fabric is what embellishment is so you're most likely going to be wearing something that is embellished even if it's only a tiny tiny stud on your um, jacket on your sleeve a little button all those things are embellishment and um, design those things have been designed on your garments and uh, the placement of them have been thought about the placement of the the color the choice of placement the um the location of where it falls on your body all those things are taken into consideration when um working with embellishment so i think that embellishment does cover a huge huge vast um variety of different elements that you can add to, and top applied onto a garment and are there many ateliers in the United States doing what you're doing, this kind of embellishment? I am actually one of a kind um, because I do luxury embellishment and um, it's a very specific type of service that I offer. Um, we actually do the product development of the embellishment as well as the final piece and production. If the piece goes into production, if it's sold on a runway um, or if it goes to stores. So I actually do the full service, um, which isn't a common service here. Um, a lot, a lot of people do it overseas outside the US. So that does make me very um, unique. Um, with a little niche in the garment center and in the United States. Oh, that's wonderful. And let's go back to the inaugural, the beautiful white cashmere coat. I think we need to talk about that. We have a beautiful picture of the coat here. Now, Gabriella Hurst, who you've worked with in the past, can you tell us what happened? She came to you in early December, correct? Yeah, correct. So uh, Gabriella Hurst and her team approached us with this project. Um, Initially, it's very uh, early on and um, the concept is very open. The concept is very wide and we work through all of the problems, work through all of the development, work through all of the drawings, the application. And um, for example, even just choosing the thread directions on a pedal was even considered and discussed. So that um, product development, uh, which is the name of the uh, overall um, organization of the garment itself. So you product develop it all the way up until you actually finally make the final garment. So I think that um, for other people just looking out at what it is or looking in and seeing just this embroidery, every single bead is considered, every single bead placement is considered, every thread, every color, every tone, every shade of every petal, all of those things are designed um, and so we really you know go into the detail and even just you can see in that photo the two shades on just one leaf and that's development you develop to get there and um, that's not just the first sample that's the probably the 30th or 40th sample all right well going back to the photograph could we go back to the one of you handling the coat please um and i see you've got your mask on there good girl but um <laughs> I wanted to ask you, when you are hand embroidering something like this, do you have to, I don't see wearing gloves, but do you have to wash your hands? I don't mean just from dirt. Is there like a science behind what you're doing when you're so close to there a garment is. like that? Something like cashmere, working with cashmere. Yeah, you can disrupt the fabric so easily with just the handle of it alone. So I actually, my I run really hot. Um, I don't know if it's stress, I don't know if it's pressure, but um, my hands always run really hot. So I have to continuously wash my hands, maybe every 10 to 15 minutes to make sure that I keep the needle nice and cold, that the bead slides onto the needle easily, and that the thread is nice to pulled through with good tension. And um, all these things are taken into consideration, especially on something white, uh, which wasn't the easiest thing to work with. No, of course not. I'm sure you would have, <laughs> but it is exquisite. <laughs> There's something very classic, classic about white and it is exquisite. For those people who are watching who don't understand, we are, don't know, not don't understand, that there is a state flower they do now. I'm, I'm in Texas and ours is the blue bonnet. And I know that uh, the first lady had, did she have the peach blossom for Delaware or somewhere? She did, yes. The peach blossom was actually located on her mask and it was actually located on the left side of her chest so that it was the closest flower placed to her heart. 
Ah, and then can I ask you, there wasn't there something else that was embroidered inside um, because of her love for education? Yes, so we actually hand embroidered a special message that was chosen between Dr. Jill Biden and Gabriella Hurst, which was a quote by Benjamin Franklin. And that was also placed on the inside of the jacket um, placed right on the left side, uh, close to her art also. Well, congratulations, because, you know, something like this is going to be hanging in the Smithsonian. I don't know if that has it hit you yet that you've just been involved in the inaugurational ensemble for the First Lady of the United States. It hasn't because we ran directly right. We were during that process. We were actually making for Fashion Week also. And um, so it hasn't hit at all. We have our last show tomorrow. Um, so you'll see some of my um, amazing designers in the background still working away. But um, yeah, we have our last uh, deadline tomorrow. So we haven't really had a break or a breathing room just to relax and take it all in. Uh, it's been pretty full on since yeah. the day. I'm not surprised. Uh, for those of you who don't know, one of uh, somebody I, I grew up loving, and I have to show you this. I brought this in from my bookshelf. So it's Irish Hands, written by Sybil Connolly. And um, actually, Sybil Connolly used to come to Dallas um, decades ago, believe it or not, because people forget when the world of fashion, the ladies in Dallas love to shop. Love it. Um, but Sybil Connolly, as you know, is the lady responsible for, I think she was the first to pleat Irish linen and for Jackie Kennedy's, um, for the beautiful photograph, our painting hanging in the White House of her inaugural gown, wasn't it? Or her inaugural outfit, one of her outfits, Sybil Connolly was responsible for. Well, she dressed the First Lady then, I know that for sure. Um, so you're right up there in the annals with those. And this one is probably the most significant book you'll ever see. And just for a little bit of uh, lightheartedness, this was mine. <laughs> I, was about, I love this. I love when this. I was about seven. And that's where I wanted to go to. You know, I, I'm from Cork, or a slang girl from Cork. And I remember, you know, knitting and sewing and embroidery. And uh, one of the big ones in Ireland was, didn't we all have to do this, was the iconic tea cosy. Do you remember this, knitting the tea cosy? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That was all part of, like, growing up. I mean, um, So did this influence it, you at all? Definitely. In my childhood, I grew up learning how to knit. Um, I watched someone really close to me um, sew curtains, um, machine sew cushions. I mean, we did knitting classes in fourth class. Um, we did sewing projects in home economics uh, in first, second and third year. I made a pillow, a wall hanging and a pair of bell bottoms for my junior surfs. Oh my gosh, um, do you still have those bell bottoms? I do. Actually, okay, good. my mom pulled them out <laughs> recently to send me a photo. <laughs> Oh gosh, we need to we need to have a picture of you in those bell bottoms. <laughs> I remember there was an article a few years ago in Ireland, I can't remember which newspaper it was, but I know it was they're gonna correct me now and I wish they were on a live feed or somebody would pass comments. I know Barbara Stack was involved and I know some others with the first communion dresses and it was this kind of nostalgia because I remember my first communion dress, it was to the knee. So it's people getting their first communion dresses out. So we need to get out our bell bottoms and maybe we should all get out what we used to make, our tea cozies and embroidery. Laura, let me ask you, go back to embellishments and embroidery. Do you think yeah. and hope that this also um, puts a very big spotlight on crafts? And like I said, in that one, it was Irish hands. We're joking, but it's very serious. And the craftsmanship that's involved, especially in this day and age where everything is so fast, fashion, and now we want the more sustainable, um, more ethically um, made clothing. What, what do you think about all that? Yeah, I really resonate with that. I mean, here in my studio, we're very, very conscious of what we do, what we make, our waste, the fabrics we use. We don't keep any stock. Uh, we don't buy things in bulk. We buy things as we need them. Um, and I think it is really important to shed a light on the fashion industry. I feel like it's slowly changing but I think it needs to change a lot more. There's a long, long, long way to go. But I think bringing the, you know, the spotlight on the importance of the makers, um, which I think are forgotten about when you wear your clothes. Um, I was just saying to somebody the other day, I don't think you realize, but your regular standard t-shirt or sweatshirt or pants, leggings, whatever it may be, it's probably gone through six factories. And that's probably a minimum. 
Um, and I don't think people realize that like here in the garment center, um, we do, you know, for example, I specialize in embroidery where there's another person specializing in um, sewing and construction, where there's another person specializing in pattern grading. And so we work together as a very close community here locally. But I don't think people or the average person realizes that that work has to be transported around to different factories. So I'll have drop offs of lot production here to get embroidered that will then go back to a sewer that will then go back to a button maker. And they're all separate people and separate separate industries and separate factories. And those are the people that are making your clothes. And um, I've really actually thought about it recently because, you know, I walk around the garment center a lot. I go to a lot of appointments and meetings and you see all these people pushing these massive, massive baskets of garments around to transport them to each factory and I really really wanted to photograph them to show people that is your clothes being walked on the street to the next factory because that's real life and them being packed onto these massive trucks on you know just down the street like that's how your clothes get made um but I think yeah going back to your question I think shedding a light on the crafts part and the making part is really important for people to understand that it's you're paying for people, real people that yes. consider this their every jo day job and their livelihood and their family's livelihood. You're paying that high price because these people are sitting here making it. Well, you're um, paying for time as well, aren't you? I mean, I think absolutely. what you're doing as well, uh, Laura, is I look at the, the world of food um, and I look at people in, in Ireland, as we know, you know, Irish food is, is top class, it's world leading. Um, you know, we have incredible ingredients, sustainability, we have incredible chefs and producers. And, you know, we've events in Ireland called, like one is Food on the Edge that's held by JP McMahon every October. Um, and yeah. it's how uh, you're doing the same in the food world because I don't think people realize as well with food, something turns up in your plate, but you want to see the story behind it. You want to see the provenance, you want to see the terroir, you want to see traceability. I think people are starting to dem demand it of fashion too. And those yeah. of us out there that don't know, like you said, I buy something and wear it and I don't think twice about it. Not because I don't yeah. care, but it's just not on, it was never front and center. Then somebody likes you says something, I think about it. You know, yeah. um, I'm seeing it happening with floristry. Shane Connolly in the UK does it. You know, he was florist for the royal family and uh, Shane talks about, you know, the oasis, the green foam. Yeah. So yeah. on Instagram, if you follow Shane Con Connolly, he says his hashtag is no floral foam and what it does to our system. And so now I don't use it at all anymore, but it was because of him. So you are, you are doing a huge job by telling us these stories, Laura, and uh, by us buying your work a little bit too. I mean, I grew up with a mother that said, buy cheap, buy twice. Yeah. So I'm kind of old school. I like to buy a few good things. Um, Laura, we've got to show people more of your work. Right. Yes. This to me is quite fascinating. As I was going through, I noticed um, some of your work. Um, this one is with feathers, and I think it was for Mark Jacobs. And this, these are examples of your embellishment and what you do. Could you tell yeah. us about what we're kind of seeing here, just in a few seconds? Sort of, what, those are what part of this did you do? Let's say, what stage yeah, did you do? The, the application of feathers. So again, it's um, an element that's taken and put on a surface to enhance it. So oh, um, there's the actual um, pattern it being laid onto, and then it's going to be stitched uh, directly after that. Um, but yeah, I think, again, you buy something with this pattern or this layout and you just think it's magic, you know, but yeah. it's actually somebody, it's somebody sitting there and doing that. Um, and like for Meghan Markle's, um, we have got a beautiful shot here of a dress she wore in Australia. And I believe this one is, yeah, it's Oscar de la Renta. But yes. could you tell us, so if this is Oscar de la Renta, and when somebody purchases it or sees this, they see Oscar de la Renta, and it's, of course, it's incredible and beautiful, but there are more people behind the process. And where were you in this process? Yeah, I was part of the design product development. And again, the application and the patterning and the layout of this piece. So just like that, you just buy it, you, you see it, you think it's just automatic. And, you know, that was a village of people, a village, like no joke. I want to say 30 people involved in that dress, and just the are... making part, just the making, not even the construction, not even the sewing, just the application of that part. 
So I think that that's a little bit lost in fashion. Um, I think that that's really important to push for like, these are the people that are making. And I'm such an advocate for the people in factories, the people that are really so talented that have been doing this for, you know, some people have been in this industry for 50 plus years sewing and know it inside and out. And I'm so lucky and I consider myself so lucky to be surrounded by those people and that I get to learn from them, work with them and employ them. Um, Ashley, do we have that video? We have a little thing of the, um, a couple little video pieces. And I, I think talking about what people are making and doing, we'll show a visual of, what is this one here? Is that? This is actually a fabric called a broderie on glace. So broderie on glace is where um, you can actually perfect shot right there. So it's doing an outline Mm -hmm. And that outline is going to be hand cut to give it um, a whole eyelet feature. And then the machine will embroider around those little eyelets. But that's a person. I have a person hand cutting out those little tiny holes. Um, of course, there's ways of doing it for production. We have um, mass, mass, mass machinery that does it for production. But for sampling, um, you know, sample is an 11 by 17 inch or an um you know, centimeter uh, size swatch to see like if the, the next one is the purling, I think. Uh, sorry, you look at this. I mean, what obviously it's yes, this is um, my senior designer and she's actually working right behind me. If you see her in the background there and um, yeah, Yukali is so talented. I'm so lucky to have her as a part of my team. What's um, her name? She Yukali. Hi, Yukali. Incredible work. <laughs> So she was um, doing the product development for this, uh, for the Altazora piece. So Altazora, we did uh, two, three body pieces for their runway uh, last season. And we did the construction, the development of the patterning and the um, application of all the pearls on those body pieces. All right, let's go to something really fun for a moment. Famous lady, her 90th year anniversary, Minnie Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell us about this one. Was this um, Diane so this von? This one, yes, was uh, for Diane von Furstenberg, and I had 24 hours to make this garment. No! Um, yes. You know what? I think that one other part that I think people forget about, even designers themselves, is the embellishment part. The embellishment part always is an afterthought, and the silhouette of the pattern always comes first. Um, the construction always comes first, and then the embellishment is really quite a you know, a last call down the line. Are they um, sequins? So, what, what are you ironing yes, there? They are sequins. They are all individually placed sequins. Um, so this was made in 24 hours by, I think about 22 people. Um, I was managing that team of people to try and make this happen. And it flew directly out to LA to be worn for that um, anniversary. Um, but again, yeah, I think that people look at that and see, you know, oh, a costume. But we were, we were working night and day uh, to make that happen. Oh, uh, it's just so fun! And then for the U.S. Olympic team and uh, the Winter Olympic team in 2018, um, the gloves and the hats. So uh, let's have a look at the gloves there close up. What did you do there with the gloves? The beading on all those? So, yep. So I was a part of managing the team for all of that beading. And um, so again, there was I think there was maybe 30 people that I managed yeah. to. Um, the product development, uh, the design, the development through the process, embroidering on leather, on suede. No one, if anyone knows that embroidery, they know how difficult that is for seed beads. Um, so yeah, again, it's just like you look at it and you think, wow, that's, you know, that's pretty. But yes, yes, was, yes. Uh, one glove took um, almost eight hours uh, to embroider. And I dread to ask, do you remember how many pairs of gloves you had to do? I don't. Um, a lot. It was a lot. I, was I think it was possibly 300 pairs. I was going to say. And uh, then the last one we have, I think, is of the actress Olivia Nunn. Um, do we have that? I mean, look at this. Yeah, this is actually, um, I constructed, yes, Matt Gala. I constructed the headpiece for this, um, for this look. And um, again, it was a very, very last minute. I had, I think, six hours to make this. Um, so again, I managed the team in the construction, the design, and the application uh, for this headpiece. But uh, you had the six Gala, hours to construct this. Yeah, and make it happen, and send it out, ship it. To, um, yeah. 
Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, Met Gala is quite the season. Unfortunately, we didn't have Met Gala uh, last year. And again, we don't have it this year. But um, I'm not complaining about a nice break. It's um, always a hectic, hectic, a hectic uh, month of May. I know, I know. And then, so those masks that everybody commented on that mask that the First Lady wore. And you have a line of masks at the moment that are available if somebody wants to purchase them. Is that correct? On Etsy? Yes. Yes, we do. Um, you know what? We had such a huge demand. Mm -hmm. um, we had so many people asking us and my in-house team put it together themselves. So uh, Ukali again, headed this project and um, she organized the pattern, designed the pattern, constructed and um, made a filter for the inner lining and um, designed the embroidery. And, you know, again, like I said, I have such wonderful people that I employ really and do. I am so I consider myself so lucky that they're so dedicated to the craft and mm -hmm. me and the vision for what yeah. I do yeah. and you know you're only as good as your um weakest player you really yes. are I and agree with I you. have a team of incredibly incredibly dedicated and talented people um I'm so glad they're for easy. sale I'm so glad that I was quick to turn around but at least it's something but you are going to have something we've got to get into this uh, last bit now which i am really excited about because yeah. i love all this uh, line of stuff the luxury athleisure wear and everything so hopefully next march is it that it, it should be launched could you tell us what you've been working on and let's start with before we we can see them behind you in the studio, but let's just show a couple of pictures we have some shots of your fabulous the lw pearl brand look at this coat and you told me that there are three layers to this coat tell us a little bit about the coat so like i said before i make for everybody else i'm so familiar with you know creating for everybody else and creating a vision for everyone so for the past five years i've been working on my own little vision too and you know i've seen companies come and go i've seen companies rise i've seen companies fail i've seen companies um designers you know come to new york leave new york and so i really wanted to create something that was different and not so much different in the look, but different in the rooted ethics and the value of the brand. And I think it's so important to not just become another fashion brand and just put product out there that, yeah, you can sell for the first year, but it's more about creating a better vision for the future of fashion. And so this mm -hmm. coat specifically was designed for, um, with climate change in mind. I mean, we're all going through it. You yourself in Texas obviously have seen it uh, yes. over the last week. Um, so this coat specifically actually has three layers designed within it. So there's a Sherpa lining, a quilted lining and an outer rainproof uh, um, shell. So the uh, two layers on the inside can be removed and put back in. And um, so again, it's just trying to create some trying to create something that has a little bit more of um a vision for the future rather than again just another product or another um another fashion brand and so what that's what i've really really tried to um embed in the value of what i'm making for this mm -hmm. brand yeah the, I, the, they're beautiful and i can see them behind you there in the studio um w will people be able to buy them online soon Yes. So what we've been doing uh, is we've been doing private pre-order, um, which is just uh, all of the people that I have um, found that were really invaluable to giving me feedback on all the pieces. So I would make pieces, send them to specific people, some people in the um, sports industry, some people in that ski, some people that do volleyball on the beach. So a very, very big range of friends, connections, family, and um, that would give me honest feedback, that mm -hmm. would give me um, very specific likes and dislikes. And I've really tried to listen to what people have to say. And so we've been doing private pre-order for all of those first people. Um, but yes, it will be available online on our website next okay. month. That be, that's wonderful. You mentioned about the, the leggings and the hats. You'll have quite a range of products there was a lot of research into that and we all see leggings out there uh 
Some people wear leggings that I sincerely wish would not wear leggings. And, um, and I don't mean because of their size, but I, I really don't need to see what's under your leggings. Um, but there's a lot goes into leggings, aren't there? <laughs> the girls in the team yeah. behind you are laughing, sorry. But it's true, come on. We all, yeah. we all think it and say it. We see people go, oh my God, in the grocery store. But you said to me that the way you're, tell us about your leggings. You had to do quite a bit of R&D on that, didn't you? Yes, so we've actually done a lot of product development and a lot of lab research on the fabric and the construction. So for example, the construction on the leggings has um, tailored lines. So the tailored yeah. lines on the legs and the waist means that if anything needs to be let out or taken in, it is a very specifically placed seam to allow someone with ease to do that. Um, and coming from obviously celebrity couture, coming from things being made the night before, coming from, you know, I do a lot of fittings. And so those lines are really, really important for a tailor or a sewer that can easily, easily, easily make those adjustments. So um, I think, again, it's really important. I mean, I'm a short person. Um, my leggings are always floating on my ankles and I want a tapered ankle. So um, we've done different lengths of leggings and we've done different, um, yeah, different lengths and then adjustable waist for all those princess seam lines directly in the center and on the sides for your hips. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful because um, people can follow you. I just wanted to let people know they can follow you on, um, obviously you've got your masks on um, Etsy yes. and I noticed you have beautiful embroidery, vintage embroidery kits on, on your Etsy page too, which I thought are lovely. We do. Those are nice. Um, but you've got two Instagram pages. You've got LW Pearl, which is the Atelier brand itself. Uh, the Atelier, uh, sorry, you've got the Atelier, which is LW Pearl. And now you've got a new page that people can follow, which is LW Pearl brand. Um, Ashley, is there any way we can find that page and bring that up, LW Pearl brand? And we're gonna, I'd like people to see it because what it does is we've got LW Pearl um, and then that's beautiful. And then we've got uh lw pearl brand and lw pearl lw pearl shows all of the work you do for all the different designers and now this new page is your new athleisure uh line so people start getting um ideas of what products are coming which i think is lovely exactly. and they can follow you there and get updates on that but what we're going to do is we'll put all those links in the uh after the show once it processes it can take anywhere I don't know, it can be five minutes and it can take anywhere up to an hour, uh, 30 minutes for YouTube to process. Normally they're very quick, but once this show is finished, it'll process and be up on YouTube. And then in the comment section, we're going to put in the links to your site and to your Instagram and to your Etsy as well. So that anybody's got questions afterwards, if they want to buy it or access it, they'll find you that way. Okay. Perfect. That sounds great. Yeah. So, um, but I think what your work, your work is incredible. Your, your client list is very, very impressive. But like I said to you, um, those are people, um, just like us, you know, they put their trousers on one leg at a time. I hope, um, yes. <laughs> what's really impressive is your approach to your work. Um, your brand, um, your ethos and your integrity, which really comes through. Um, and how much time you spend on people and the products and everything. And Rosaline McMeal was the one who introduced me to you last year. Um, so thank you to Rosaline. Um, I read about you in the Irish Times in 2016, an article uh, written by um, the fashion editor, Deirdre McQuillan. Yes. Uh, she wrote a wonderful article about you. So if anybody wants to do some research and read some really great stories or very well written pieces because uh, people will write about you and then there's people who really write about you uh, <laughs> and that's worth having actually actually i'd like to put up maybe we should put a link to one or two of those really great articles as well for people to click on and read on the irish times and that but so by no means am i uh, claiming that i found you or anything like that. it's just <laughs> for me here in dallas and texas um and we're just going to wrap it up now uh, bring this show to an end is to let people know so my show is called Rachel Gaffney's Real Ireland. And the idea it really is to introduce you to the people, the places, the products, um, the very best of Ireland. Um, and I think, Laura, you are a shining example of the work ethic, the quality. Um, and, you know, you're a great ambassador for, for what um, Ireland has to offer and what Ireland produces. Because we get pigeonholed on the 17th of March every year, as you well know, for the green beer and cabbage. And it does my head in. Yes. 
because they think we're all falling off bar stools and that's all we do and that's not what we do and that's not who we are so it's it's a pleasure to shine a light on somebody like you and if anybody has any tips or any suggestions on people we should talk to photographs or whatever we just want to spread the word and tell the story i'm just a glorified shana key which is an irish storyteller so laura thank you so much thank you so for much joining for joining us me. and thank you for your team to your team there behind you and to everybody watching and listening, um, that's it for this week. We are busy preparing a few future episodes. If you have any suggestions, if you'd like to work with us, let us know. But until next time, bye, y'all. Thank you.